All right, and we're live. Happy Thirsty Thursday, everyone. Today, we're making wine. Don't worry, Paula's right behind me. Hello. <laughs> uh, today, we're going to be making Amarone wine, which I'm excited about. Uh, it's an end premier kit um, by RJS, and I don't know anything about this style of wine at all. Well, I do. <laughs> and I have notes somewhere. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I, I think that this style of wine is something that I heard about for the first time probably 20 years ago. But I wasn't a huge wine drinker at that point. Um, couldn't afford to be, right? So I heard about it because I had a friend of mine who's one of his best friends was actually starting an Italian restaurant. And they were naming the restaurant Amarone. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. And so he was born in Rome. They were coming down here from Toronto, and they were opening a little Italian eatery and named it Amarone. But they were very worried because they didn't think that anybody would really recognize the name. Yeah. I then, mean, it does sound Italian. To it me. is <laughs> Italian. Yeah. It's Italian. <laughs> so the thing is, I probably didn't hear anything else of it other than our little restaurant in town for years and years and years. So then um, an Amarone kit came out um, maybe four years back, and I'm just kind of guessing, and it did well, and then it went away. Oh. That's exactly how we felt about it. We had one Amarone kit. It did quite well. When we found out that it hadn't done that well in the U.S., it had done well elsewhere, uh -huh. but not in the U.S., and they stopped distribution for a while. Oh, shoot. But now yeah. it's back. Well, it's back with a, with a vengeance, really. Um, now we have it in Wine Expert. We have it in RJS kits. I mean, everybody's everybody's talking about you know Amarone, and so we're gonna do an on premiere, which is one of the RJS kits. But we have a lot to choose from, mm -hmm. a lot to choose from as far as Amarone kits go. Um, and I think that if you are a lover of red wine, dry red wine, you, you need to try this. I didn't tell you this, but I was really surprised that it was a red wine because in my head it just sounded like it'd be, like the name sounded white to me. So when you're like, yeah, it's good, and I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I was just like connotations. It sounded I like guess. It. So we but do have an Amarone we do. That, that we're drinking. And okay, I'm looking full disclosure, to it. I just went to the dentist and I had my first cavity ever filled. So this side of my mouth is like completely numb Dribble right now. Dribble glass coming. Um, yeah, so I'm not even going to try to say what like, anything tastes like or smells like. Or you can still taste. Nope, I can't. I'm out of commission. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'll try, but be prepared. I just want to watch it kind of, kind of, you know. No, I don't. I th are you going to drink like this? I have white shoes on. <laughs> you do. You do. Uh, I think I'll be fine. Uh oh, we're trying to reconnect the internet on Facebook. Okay, we'll see if that works out. Trying to reconnect. Mm. Mm. I can just restart it. Well, let's try it. Yeah, I'll try to restart it. That's really weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. That's being a stinker. Yeah. I don't know if we're going live on Facebook today. I'll try it one more time. Oh, wait. Go live. We'll see if it works. Hi, everyone. Hi, Instagram friends. No, we're back. We're back. I think we're back. Okay. Sorry, Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, to like, since this video will start, we're drinking Amarone and we're making an Amarone kit. Absolutely. And you went to the dentist. And I went to the dentist, and my mouth's numb, so. Okay. Let me try it. Oh my gosh, I'm like actually scared. I was like, I'll be fine. 
even swallow. Like, it, yeah, it's just like so weird. Dang, this is so good too. Oh, Facebook's back out. I think Facebook's down in it. I'm so, I'm actually legitimately so upset because this is delicious. Yes. But I'm scared. Do you feel warm? Like, it's, it's one of those that just make you feel warm it's and like toasty. It's like oddly sweet. I was not expecting it. You think it it's to, sweet? I think it's sweet. I think it has berry flavor to it. But I think the finish is dry. With how I'm drinking. I'm literally drinking like this. <laughs> Someone says good morning from Mexico. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Facebook. Hang in there with us, Facebook. We're we don't know our what's best. going on. Yes. Yeah, I think it's all this. I don't know. I well, really like it. I taste the berries. I do, too. I taste a wonderful amount of tannins, earthiness, but at the same time, it's warm, and it's delicious, and it feels velvety. Yeah. I'm, like, actually really impressed by this. Because uh -huh. I was not expecting to be like, oh, wow, I'm really going to love this. And I actually am like, oh, wow, I really love this. Well, and I think, you know, if you haven't done an Amarone, you're going to want to do one. If you have done an Amarone, you totally are going to understand the exclusivity of an Amarone. It's not like you're going to walk in and into any all restaurants and have it on the menu. You're not going to find it in all stores. Um... It's a specialty item, mm -hmm. and you can have it and make it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm glad that they brought the kids back. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. So, basically what they're saying is, all right, I wrote this down. So, they, it comes from a northeast um, region in Italy called Veneto. I'm maybe not saying it as beautifully as if I were a native person. And it's near Venice, so that helped me figure out what to do there. It said it will typically be full of raspberry, blackberry, blackcurrant, and full ripe tannins. So I think that's where we get a little bit of the earthiness, but it's not like a musky or mm -hmm. super dirty earthiness. It's a a velvety feeling. It's like it's like you said. It's warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. And when when I like I still I haven't drank it for a minute, and I still am like feeling warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, lovely. So, Germany uh, is one of our employees. She mm -hmm. was saying that she took this kit home. Yes. And this particular kit needs quite a bit of time to age. Yes, yes. So, um, that's one of the things I wrote, too. Because you, this is going to be... Don't judge this wine based on the flavor when you bottle it. Okay. It's going to be immature. It's gonna seem like it's not amazing. You're gonna to wanna to, to age this one for a couple of years. Couple of years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think she was saying that it recommended, I don't know, it might be in the instruction somewhere, but I would it give recommended it, like 60 days. I would give it more than that. Days, but, but you know the fun part of that? I mean. You could open a bottle then. Yeah. And then compare it to a bottle a month later. A month later, it could be Talk about date night. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a fun date night. That was night. the Amarone today. Yeah. Woo. And then make your meals around it. For sure. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. All right. So, I'm wondering if we want to just take our face, because it just is coming up and down. We want to take it lot, um, down and then just put a post that, if you wanted to watch us, to go to Instagram. Yeah. I mean, we can keep it running, and I'll just put a post up afterwards. Okay. We can do that, too. We'll just be spotty. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in full disclosure, we chose this particular Amarone because the box got broken um, during transit and and it would not make it back out. So, we get to keep it. Yeah. If anyone on Facebook does, like, if we're cutting in and out, just go over to Instagram. It's Homebrew Ohio. Um, and then you can watch us live there if you want. But um, I'll put the video up afterwards. So, we should be good. Okay. So I'm gonna get to show you a couple other things besides making wine today. She's though. very excited. I'm super excited because I have a couple of um, new things. Oh, I have one major new thing to show you. So first of all, and we cleaned. I, we cleaned everything yesterday using PBW. Um, PBW is just. A, what was this? It's just. Um, this is the one pound version. You just take some of this, and, and it comes. It looks like the old Tide, doesn't yeah. it? Like granules. 
and you put that in um, your water and you clean everything, it gets all the debris off, so it's truly cleaning. Uh oh. It's not, That's I only, I tipped it, it up. Oh, did it's you? Open. Okay. It's open. It's open, yeah. I just didn't open the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, yep, so there you like go. That. So it's just uh, a matter of making a solution, using that to clean, rinse, 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 rinse really well. So everything was cleaned yesterday. So then today, we made a bucket of oh, star sure. sand. Mm -hmm. So that bucket is just um, water and star sand, and that's Discard where we have here. all of our, our equipment so that we are fully sanitized for this endeavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we took our, our instructions and we read them. We did. We read them all so we would know what we're doing, and I still recommend that if you're doing it at home and, and you're not doing it publicly, you still really need to read through and make sure that you're ready to go. Because mm -hmm. we even discussed like, okay, how would you do this or when would you do that? Yeah. Okay, um, so that is, is what we're doing. Now I can tell you, and you can see these, they're fantastic. The directions are amazing. They're easy to follow, but you do just need to, to follow them um, step by step. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first step, going to be to clean and sanitize and the next thing is we'll add four liters of warm water to our primary fermenter so to this guy right and um, that is because we're going to be adding in bentonite um, and so I always I cheat on this part it, there's nothing wrong with putting four liters of water in here and stirring it but I have, I have trouble because five liters of water only goes to here so four liters of water is like so little so sometimes I just do it like in that in here, here. Yeah. and then dump it. That's but smart. It's only two liters. I mean, it shouldn't really matter. But I'm not telling you not to follow direction. I'm not just okay. Um, scissors are over yeah. here. Don't forget to sanitize your scissors. So this is bentonite. Um, it's basically like a type of clay, and it's one of the first things that gets added to the wine. And the reason you want to get the water slightly warm is because if you don't, this will clump more, and it's fine like if this clumps a bit, but getting the water warm will help it not do it as much. So. And then you want to pour it in slowly. You grab my sanitized spoon. Um, this one, I, I just always use a 28 inch, um, I'm trying to keep up with you, 28 inch plastic spoon, so it's easy to clean and sanitize. Okay, and we're making mud. Basically. Mm -hmm. You do want to go slowly and you do want to keep stirring or you're going to feel it get real gritty in the bottom. It's going to drop to the bottom and you're going to have a, a sand castle. <laughs> okay, and I think we're doing How, How's that mouth? It, it's like I keep just testing it, you know? Alright. It's actually stirred up very easily. I have done it before where I've done it by myself. And I just was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, and I had a mess. Yeah, I did too. Well, the and, first time I tried to make and, it, that's okay. what happened. And you can do it by yourself for sure. You just really do want to make it go as slow as we just did. And so we end up with some gray water. That's what we have. Beautiful. All right. And then we'll dump it Now, the, the bucket is not sanitized yet, right? Oh, no, it isn't. Okay. I'm glad you said that. that's I'm the cleaning that's and sanitizing queen. Yes. yes. So should I think I have um, star sand in that bottle over here? Really I prefer the brand new. Okay. And use that. Use the cup measurer. Okay. Dump a bunch in. Gotcha. We're gonna do a big swirl. Oh yeah. Then this is the part where if you do all your hard work and you buy your kit, but you don't really pay attention to the cleaning and the sanitizing part. Right. Sadness sets in. Sadness. And we don't want that. And even like right now, I would put these 
right back in here because I've already used them. They're going back in the sanitizer for the next thing I'm going to use them for. And some people may say I'm over the top, but I have not had a problem with, I with the things think, I make. Yeah, I think it's better to be safe. I'm sorry. Especially when it's such a time intensive self. Gosh, you know, while you're doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and break. <laughs> so we are out in the store today. You're going to hear the doorbell. That's just customers coming and going. We've got four processing stations for those of you who order and have it shipped at home out here. And here are some tape guns. It is a home brew shop. And we have a truck that just came in. So they're putting um, product away. All right, are you for sanitized? Just sanitized. You, a yeah, it's probably mine. Okay, so there are bubbles in there. That's okay. When you we use Star, Star Sand will bubble, um, their whole thing, their, their motto is don't fear the foam. So don't feel like you need to rinse it out. Please don't rinse. It's a non rinse sanitizer. So you don't want to rinse. And then I'm going to just dump this in. Look how well that you can see. There's no residue at the bottom. Yeah. But I am going to go ahead and just fill it up with two more liters so it's got the four liters. So it has a four. Yep. I just think it's easier in a smaller vessel to get that bentonite to completely it seems dissolve. Good, yeah. yeah. It's just a little trick I've used, and it's not exactly what it says, but it, that would be hard to explain. Mm -hmm. Like, using their vessel, but make sure you sanitize it, do it, mm -hmm. the whole thing. So right, what's our next step? The next step is adding the contents of the juice concentrate bag into the primary fermenter. And this boy is hefty. Well, and let's talk about that. So yeah. here's the deal. I'm gonna, it's a, I don't think we need this again, so I'm not sanitizing it. I'm going to put it in the sink. 18 liters? Is okay. that? Yeah. Let's see. It, yeah, this is, a, this is a big guy. So we're doing an on premiere winery series kit. I have prices. So the on premiere Italian style, which is what we're doing, is $149.99. Let's talk about that because I did the math. So for a kit that is $150, if you get 30 bottles out of it, which you should, it's five bucks a bottle. Five dollars a bottle. And I'll tell you what, if you go out and you're like, well, I want to try an Amarone first to see if I like it, you're going to pay between Thirty and one hundred dollars for one bottle to try it. Promise you that. I did my math this morning. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. that's a more wine, less cost. Yeah. So I was just on my way to get something. I know. Oh, Hold you that thought. The... Yes. 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 So, so for anyone that's ever made a wine kit before and you struggled with the uh, opening the juice bag, I know that I did the first time that I did. Um, Paula has a nifty tool. You see what I did? All of our accessories. Wow, look at that. Yeah. We were cleaning yesterday. We were. So here's the deal. We do not have these in stock right now, but the good news is they are arriving in port very soon and we are going to have them again. And I don't know how much they cost, but it, they are priceless, to be very honest with you. So. I'm trying to follow your head. It's not working. Are you trying to squeeze my head? <laughs> so I have a heck of a time getting the caps off of yeah. the bladder of juice. I think even we, we had a, one of our affiliates did a video and he was like, all right, and then you're just gonna add the this and you're gonna, uh, use a pair of pliers and then oh. you're, he's like he, he was like you're just gonna pop the you're gonna use a pair of, you're gonna you're gonna get scissors <laughs> like he, oh, just kept, it open? he just kept changing his method yeah and it was really funny all right so this this one um i will have to tell you if you we have a bunch of different kits now we'll talk about those in a minute if you went with a wine expert kit it has cutouts in here to help you hold the juice bag. Oh, that's what those are for. Yes. Brilliant. They're brilliant. Because you can close it all back up and have the juice bag sticking out and you use that's the box smart. and you don't have this wiggly 
juice bag. That's smart. RJS doesn't do that, so we are going to have to muscle this thing. Okay. So we're going to take Should it. Should we move the wine? We're going to take it. No, we're going to do okay. this way. Ready? Okay. We never move wine. <laughs> Okay, what is in the bottom of that? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we have raisins. So this is good. This wine is going to be so good. Oh, there's so much in this kit. Dude, can you guys see this? Look at how First of all, I'm going to let the mountain climber look that up. Okay. Um, How are we going to do this without spilling it? Well, there's no promises, oh. <laughs> but here's what we're going to do. We're going to move all this stuff. Okay. Because this is a kit that comes with a lot of pieces. We don't need any of these pieces yet, okay? Okay. All right, so then we're going to get this up on the top, okay, okay. where it's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Uh -huh. Now. Your little tool. My little tool? Dang. That was a breeze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, not so much here. Now we have I'm to pour so this scared. as slowly as we can. Okay. Okay. You're giving the muscles. Come on this side. Okay. You the muscles. I'm, right. I'm not the muscles. All right. We're going to pick this up and we're going to pour it slowly in here. Slowly. <laughs> I can't see what okay. I'm doing. I'm going to throttle this. Okay. Oh my goodness. Because you will have splash. And a splash means less wine. Okay. I'm trying to go slow and here. You know how I feel about like spilling or not being able to drink my wine. Nobody wants me sad around here. That color. It's very dark. It's a very dark color. I prefer that stayed in a bucket and not on me. Yeah, I'm going to dinner with girlfriends tonight. I do not want to show up looking like I was painting something red. She would never do that. She would definitely change. I don't would, let her. Even don't if let, I had to buy an outfit, I would change. Don't let her fool you. Now the other thing is. This, the juice to, to water ratio on this? Yeah, is like negative a million. Well, Approximately. Yeah, whatever, however ratio is like. If people say, oh no, I only do all juice. Dude. Yeah, um, yeah <laughs> us too. That's crazy. Yeah, I had, I had my son bring out a thing of water. We're not gonna need it. This bucket is almost full. Holy cow. Oh, wait, wait, the aroma, Dang. the aroma. Dude, that's you strong. you smell that? Yeah. You can smell yeah. it over there. They can Joel smell it at the processing see. stations. Joel approves. Look at that. That's just happiness. Oh, that is beauty. That is beauty. Look at that. Look at that color. Yeah. That's really nice. Oh, boy. And okay. I'm, I'm sure it says to... Rinse the bag. Let me see. Yeah, I think it did. Rinse the bag with warm water and pour the water into the That's about all we're going to need. So I'm going to rinse it with yeah. warm water right now. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a question of what you're, you're using tap water. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, if your tap water has no off flavors and is real palatable, you can use it. Actually, uh, most of the time I do, I buy... Uh, here it is. I buy. I just go one of these. It's a five gallon head pack. I fill it the day before. I let it sit it in the store to acclimate to room temperature. And I use this water right from the tap after it sat for 24 hours mm -hmm. or more. It's perfect. Also sanitize it. Yep. We um, sell those. Yeah. And they're not expensive. So it'll save you money in the long run. So you do want to get out and get the nooks and crannies. And get all the good stuff out of this bag. Like, jeez. It's, it's basically full. Uh, all right, I'm going to do it one more time because I sell a little bit. Okay. at home are drinking your wine too. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh, oh. 
Okay, we are real close to the fill line there. And I'm gonna hold the phone so we can take a gravity reading. So if I need to increase water, it's really hard to decrease water. Or gotcha. Impossible. Yeah. Um, so now it says, it says add water um, up to the line and stir vigorously, but we're just gonna. Okay, so we're not gonna stir vigorously with that. We're not. We're not. Uh, you didn't even know how excited I am to show my new contraption. Oh, I knew. Okay. She's been talking about this all week. So, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. The deal is, this part matters because if you don't get your fermentables all the way stirred throughout and super happy, it slows your fermentation and nobody has time for that. So, this next part, the other part is when we get to the degassing stage, which isn't today, degassing is super important or you're gonna have this terrible mouthfeel and it's not going to be the wine you wish it to be. There was something called a three-pronged degasser that was in production forever. And a couple years ago, it stopped. No one could get it wasn't available, no one's producing it. I held on to mine like it was my right arm. <laughs> it's back. It's back. It's back. The three-pronged degasser is back. Hey, this is kind of like a, a wine all in it, all in its entirety where like, we are like, no, why did we stop making it? Because the kit was being stopped made. The, oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So here's the deal. I just get my handy dandy, oops, make it go the right way. Drill. Drill. You get yourself a drill. But you gotta know how to use a drill. So <laughs> okay, so I have already um, sanitized my three pronged degaster. And uh, it's gonna look like this. It's so simple. <laughs> so simple, but so brilliant. I feel like an alien. And the thing is, it's, it's not cheap. It's $39.99 for just the degasser. You need to have your own drill. But I will use it now, and it makes sure that all the fermentables are taken care of. And I use it during degassing. And if you've ever degassed something by hand. It takes a long time. Even with the one gallon, I was sitting there like forever. And the bubbles are just coming up, coming up, coming up. And sometimes you have like this, you can have an overflow and everything. This is the answer. So I use it in two times in, in the creation. Are you, are you gonna need to be blessed? I was, yeah, I was okay. like, I think I'm good now. Okay. I think you should. So put me. that in. Okay. You're scaring me a little bit. Well, let me see what you have. We have it on, let me see how we have, let me see here, okay. Do you wanna take this? Do you want me to? Um, I feel like you want to. Well, I'm gonna make it go slow. Okay, here, okay. I can do it. Okay, and then I'm gonna step back. And you will make like a little volcano on the inside. You don't have to, move, have to it. move it. You don't okay. have to move it. It will move it because as it goes around, those prongs go out and they will move the whole thing. All right, there you go. There you go. You're doing hey, great. Hey, look at that. Yes. And there is no amount of stirring by hand that is going to do this to the wine. So how will I know when to stop? <laughs> Well, you probably already could have, but I was enjoying it. Oh, really? Yeah. You can think about how much stirring you would have to do to make it do that. A lot. Yeah. Look Done. A lot. Completely stirred. Look at that. Is that when we say shaking that stir? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are well mixed. Now, we did um, tap up. So it says add the water. We said to check um, the temperature and stir vigorously. I would say we did that. Right. So let's check the temperature. Let's check the temperature. All right. I have a sanitized. I just want to show you guys the lab color thermometer. Of it. It's so pretty. It's literally so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna turn this camera around. Which I'm gonna shake it. Smells good, doesn't it? Look how pretty that is. All right. So we're just about to measure the temperature. And for those of you that are just joining, we're making Amarone wine. We're also 
drinking Amaroni wine, which is the fun part. Okay, and we want the temperature to be between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are going to check that. I, this is just one of those simple laboratory thermometers. It's already been sanitized, playing in here. So we'll just check and see. Okay, we're a little bit high actually. It's kind of hot in here. It is a little hot in here. We're at 82. 82, dang. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do in that case? So in that case, what's going to happen is... Um, when we get... We're, we're going to go ahead and put this in the air-conditioned office for a little bit. And then we'll sprinkle the, the yeast in about an hour or so after it's in there. Okay, cool. The temperature matters. Okay, it must be cool it down by adding... Oh, excuse me. Bless you. Oh, excuse me. All right, so here's the deal. All right. Now, if your kit contains these additives, oak powder and or chips, we have... Hungarian oak, medium toast. It's going to look like that. It says open the bag and add now. Stir vigorously. Yeah, okay. I was really tempted to just go like this. But you oh, don't do that. my head would have popped off. Don't have my head pop on. Okay. It says oak tea. We do not have oak tea. Elderflower infusion bag. Boy, I'd like to know which one has that. Since I'm a huge gin drinker, I would love that, probably. Um, raisins. Boom. Add directly to the juice in the primary fermenter and stir. So we're going to run so the... We're going to stir again, aren't we? Yep. So I just sprinkle that in yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, and the raisins are here. Did you put that back in there? Yeah. Before I worked here, I would have never thought that you would put literal wood chips into wine. What? <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah, it, it's like sawdust. It's just straight up sawdust on top of your wine. Well, we're going to mix it in. And then, yeah, Paul is doing um, raisins. raisins. So... I think it's time for new brewing scissors. Yeah, probably. Oh, look, it's legit raisin. It's legit, yeah. All right, and then it's just served vig vigorously. I wonder okay, what wait a second, that. we're not done. We're not done? Oh, wait, yeah, stir vigorously after that and stir, okay. Stir vigorously and stir. Here we go, all right, we got it. So they want these to go, oh, see that's, you're never gonna get them that stirred by hand. Whoa. There's a volcano going on. Whoa. That's perfect. Okay. And the nice part about this too, I just, realized, I just realized this too, is that um, it won't, like, there won't be a lot to catch on it. No, it's, it's the, the perfect it thing and it wasn't around. You see why I was so sad. Yeah, I Okay. Do. All right, mm, delish. All right, now it says if I have dried grape skins, which I do not have. So I keep going, crushed grape skins, which I, holy we moly, do have. We do have. So we have a lot of crushed grape skins. This explains the price of this kit, honestly. Um, all right, so it says, Cut the grape skin pouch with a sanitized pair of scissors. Empty the grape skin into the straining bag. Avoid, avoiding contact between the grape skins and your hands. <laughs> Tie the bag securely in place into the primary fermenter. Stir vigorously for maximum color extraction and to maintain a healthy fermentation, stir every two days. So you know the part where it said avoid contact with your hands? That's the part I'm most concerned about. <laughs> okay, well let's open them both up. Or okay. let, do should it at I a cut, time? Okay, should I cut a corner? Or I think I'm gonna need more of a, than a corner. Yeah, that's so I'm thinking I'll just cut it straight across. Alright, All what's the worst that can it. happen? We're we just drinking and making and it's um eleven thirty five in the morning. Dang, we definitely need new brew scissors. Yeah. These are not sure. Well, ironically, I have a brand new pair of scissors in my office that will be exchanged after this. Eh, we're making it work. 
That's probably fine. Okay, so we've got the bag. And I'm going to kind of go down here toward the more end of the bag. Look at, look at what this looks like. It's just like a bunch of crushed grapes. How does it smell? Um, like dark. Dark, dark earthy, and maybe, lovely and velvety and full of tannins and beautifulness. It smells dark. That's okay. what it smells. It smells like. dark. <laughs> smells since, balanced. Since Paula. black is my favorite color, I'm good with it. Wait, black is your favorite color? Hundred percent. Yellow is mine. So that so explains us, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think Tom's watching this live? I hope so. Usually. It just made me think of it because she said that uh, my personality reminds her of uh, her husband, um, cause we and we like to drink the same thing, so it's just it's interesting, it's funny. All right, there's that. It looks. Is that, do you think that's? It looks enough? like jam. It does. Mm -hmm. All right, we got one more. Okay. Talk about a comprehensive kit. Yeah, this is a hefty one, huh? Yeah. No wonder it was so heavy. And it's the Italian style, which is funny because I think had I gone out to the shelves and I had to pick one, I would have gone with the straight classic. That's so me. I would just go classic. We have classic. We do, but I, I'm i thrilled with this one, and I think right. it's an unexpected bonus. So the Amarone Classic is $169.99, and I think I would have assumed that the $20 extra was going to buy me extra, more. I don't know, maybe it does, but what more could you have than all of this? Raisins and skins. Yeah. And. For real. Okay, I didn't cut that one as well, but we're gonna try it. Definitely, I would recommend, I'm not saying that you have to, but I would recommend getting a friend for this. Like, to make, help you make this. Yeah, it should be a little trickier. Although you could probably do it if you had like an old coffee can or something and you could wrap this around right. it, put it in. You don't want to lose any of the juice either though. I was thinking about wrapping around the bucket, but Paul was like, no, that definitely would break. I'm like, I'm like if it rips it, then you'd be so sad. We don't want it. There should be no sadness in this. All right. There might be a trick to getting this out. But no, you're doing a good job. You... It's wiggly. <laughs> I think that's the majority of okay. it. Okay, and it said to tie it, right? Um, did it? Let's see. So it says... Tie bag securely and place in the primary fermenter. Yep. Okay, so it's just a muslin bag. It's... If you've ever made beer, it's similar to the ones and that you'd steep your hops in. Just way and? bigger. Or er, not super that. hops, so super green. Your grain, but you, there's also hot bike Gosh, that's muslin. That is so pretty. I mean, like, freaking look. Look at that. It's so pretty. I think I'm tie dyeing. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, basically, if we put oh, a shirt in this, this is gonna be amazing. Dang, and then it disappears just like that. Just like that. So if we have to stir it every two days, we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to get some friends because we're gonna go on vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Let, did we want to talk about that f briefly? So, Paul and I are going to be, both conveniently took vacation at the same time. So next week, there's- Which we didn't even talk to each other We about. didn't talk to each other about, we're just that good. Um, so, we're not going to be having a Thursday Thursday next week. So, sorry to disappoint any of our fans. Um, but yeah, everyone needs a break sometimes, so. <laughs> I'm going to Virginia Beach. I'm going to South Dakota. I choose mine. You <laughs> choose yours. See, again, again. Black. Uh, well, yellow. Sunshine. Well, South Dakota, we have a friend that has a wedding. So it wasn't like we picked the destination, but we are going climbing. So. Shockingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited. It should be fun. It will be perfect. Oh, you said Virginia Beach? Yeah. I had, my godparents are, uh, they used to live in Virginia Beach. Well, my husband's I went there. Um, brother and sister-in-law live there. So we're going to visit family. Cool. And he used to live there, so I've never been. Oh, you haven't? Mm -hmm. I've been a place that Paula hasn't. Yeah, it just hasn't been on my list. I feel like actually... I go to the Outer Banks if I usually head that way. I think that we probably have both been to quite a few places, but like not the same ones. Yes. Probably. Yes. 
Looks All right, like it's still too warm. warm. Still so too it does warm. tell you to check it again um, between 68 and 77. Usually the wine thief. Now we're gonna test the, the, the gravity. And then um, we're gonna have to put this in a warm place between 65 and 72. Raised area about three to four feet high where it will be undisturbed. What's up with that? Does it just not want it sitting on the ground that might be I think cold? so. It doesn't want any fluctuations at all. And then sprinkle the yeast over and do not disturb it for 48 hours. Do not stir the yeast in. Let it hydrate out its own. Oh, okay. Then we'll put the lid on it with an airlock. And then um, we will check the gravity. It says daily. Um, but it should take six to eight days before it's ready to rock and roll to the next step. This is way too warm for us to pitch the yeast. Okay. So. So we'll just put the lid on and move it. Right. So we're going to, but we are going to test the gravity and make sure that we yep. don't need to add some more water or whatever. Yeah. Now, I'd be surprised if we need to add much more. Well, we'll see. So I have a sanitized um, hydrometer test jar and I have a stainless steel baster. Mm -hmm that we're going to use. Have you done this before? Uh, I mean, you just put it in and then... Yeah. Now the key here is getting enough so that your hydrometer actually floats. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I did this, I was like, why is it not floating? My husband goes, because uh, there has to be enough liquid for it to float. Yes. And then this particular kit uses just Lavalin EC1118, which is a traditional champagne yeast. So it's a hard working yeast. By the way, this kit also comes with some really cool labels. I'm gonna be the graphic designer, you be the worker here. Dang. Look at these labels. Very classic, very pretty. Yeah, so uh, easy peasy. You guys right. can see how dark this is too. Like, Pretty dark. Poor All Facebook right. world, they keep dropping. I out. know, I feel bad. For our viewers on Instagram, uh, you show the right platform today. They're throwing things at us over They're, here. Nice going, Joel. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> okay, so they want a 1.020 uh, gravity reading. So let's, let's see, see where let's, we are. Let's take it up. We want to. 1.020. Let me get myself here. Yep. Can you see where we are? Yeah. Alright. I'll let it go. It's gonna be in the blue range. Yep. It looks like it's a it's a little high. Like 1.1? 1. 1? I don't know, it's hard to tell through the camera. So is that what is that what you're reading? Uh huh. Yeah, it's a little bit, little bit high. So we are gonna add a bit uh, of a water. Smidge of water. Yep. And I'm gonna add it cold this time to help us in our endeavor. Help us in the mm -hmm. smart. But we are so close. Really close. Now, when, when we take it... But we haven't time, hit the, the ridge of where we should have popped up anyway, even with all this going on. When we take it the next time, we add this back in. So... Or does it... Like, how does that work? I'm going to make the adjustment because we're going to run out of time here in our live. But if I was doing it at home, I would add that back in there. And then I would... I would... You usually don't use this again. Okay. Okay? And then you would just take a brand new sample. Okay. Okay? And I'm adding cooler water. Okay. Now, in the name of time, we have a lid that we're going to. Well, so if this were perfect, we would sprinkle our. Just open this with our scissors, sprinkle the yeast, put this lid on. We've got a. My favorite kind of airlock. Multiple kinds of airlocks. I know somebody was saying that they like the edge-shaped ones because it makes them feel like a scientist. Well, they're prettier. Like, yeah. Did you get a lid on them? 
thought I did. Might be somewhere in there. I can see it. Uh, where's our little accessory bucket? Oh, found it. Just kidding. JK. Okay, so we've got our three prong airlock. I will fill it full of three this high. Airlock. You're still under three prong. Three prong. Three piece <laughs> airlock. I'll fill it to here with star, star, star sand. Put it in here. And we will check it daily and stir it. Yep. Yeah. And then, as far as next week, like I said, we won't be, um... And I do have the, the different, um, kits if you want to... Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Care. As far as next week, we will be skipping next week's Thursday Thursday, because like I said, we'll be on vacation. But then we'll be right back at it the following Thursday. Um, really, really briefly, all the Amarone styles that we have are, uh, the Unpremier Amarone Classic. Uh, it's 169. Uh, then the... Italian Amarone style, one forty nine ninety nine. Um, Crew Select is one twenty nine ninety nine. The Reserve is one thirty four ninety nine, and then the Private Reserve is going to be one seventy four ninety five. But it's called Forza. Forza, but it's the Amarone style. It's an Amarone style, right? Gotcha. So those are going to be all the different options that we have available. Someone says, uh, "Why wouldn't you use it again?" Are they talking about... I think so, the reason I wouldn't use this again is because you have the potential for contamination. So, even though we cleaned it and sanitized it, anytime you have something that you've taken out, it's touched this, it's touched this, it's touched this, you put it back in, you could potentially um, introduce Continue, something yeah. that you don't want to introduce. You probably wouldn't, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. But, like, yeah. I would guess most of my brewers actually do put it back in, but the technical way to do it is to not put it back great question yeah yeah that is a really good question yeah. um so this is day one now as far as the rest of the steps um like us like we were talking about earlier we'll wait six to eight days um until the gravity gets to 1.02 or lower and then we'll proceed with the next um couple of steps so basically that will be adding some of the different um chemicals to clear the wine and then the third step will be stabilizing and clearing which will take approximately 14 days um and then after those 14 days the next step will be bottling and are we gonna do um a live of the day we degas um we definitely can i yeah. think we should because the degassing is really one of the most interesting stages this one's just really stirring things up put it together right yeah, it, it kind of will depend on the timing, but there's nothing saying that um, we can't do videos, uh, like, not on Thursday, Thursday, what? showing a different set. Yeah, what? What? But, uh, yeah. We can try it. So, we'll try to walk, I think it'd be a good idea to walk everyone through 100%. from start to finish, mm -hmm. especially since this kit is so comprehensive, it has the oak chips. Yeah, it's not a beginner the, kit, although yeah. if you're a beginner and you can read, you can still do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about a lot of these homebrewing kids. If they say they're advanced, it's really just like adding some more stuff. I think in. it's a warning to pay attention. Yeah, advanced, mm -hmm. pay attention. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, with that, I think that we'll go ahead and cut this live off. We'll um, go ahead and put the see lid on for this. Two weeks. Two weeks. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna lay on the beach. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not kill myself on some ropes. So. Okay. Uh, Cheers, happy Thirsty Thursday, and we will see you in a minute. Exactly.